My guest for the morning is Dr. Rashid Popo. He is the minister responsible for private sector and PPPs at the presidency. And thanks for joining me, sir. Thank you very All much. Right. And uh, we have uh, also former member of parliament for Lower West Achim. And James Apitu Ankara is here with us. Thanks for joining me, sir. Yes, how, you. how was your weekend, the two of you? Oh, very Mine good. Mine was quite hectic because I had a funeral. Right. Know, yesterday at the time that I had the invitation, I was you see. Try, uh, right. to drive back into town. Yes. Okay, mm. but thanks. We're also very much uh, happy that you've been able to make the time this morning. Thank you. We know that Mondays usually are busy times. Over yeah. the weekend, you may have been stressed, mm. uh, uh, holding a lot of dialogue sessions with mm. your people, etc. But in the meantime, though, we know that by the close of um, it's a Friday, so to speak, the medical doctors, that's uh, members of the Ghana Medical Association, had given all indications that they were calling off their strike action. And as a result of that, a statement duly followed. But thereafter, uh, it was also announced that by from this morning, they would have started working. Well, we'll try and touch base with the various uh, polyclinics as well as the public health institutions we have around and our correspondents already uh, making sure that we get the best details as much as possible to give you the best feedback. Uh, but I have to start with you, Dr. Rashid Perko. What do you make of it? Uh, after all the things that have happened now, I guess it's good news after all. Uh, they've decided to resume their decision, so to speak. Well, well, it's good news. It's very good news. Um, it shows that they are listening to the public. It also shows that um, they realize the line of action they were taking is not sustainable. You know, um, by their profession, they have code of conduct and they have professed to serve mankind, humankind, rain or shine in all conditions. It is what they have taken upon themselves. And if you have challenges with your allowances, you know, it should not be a reason for you to lay down your tools and say you will not work to the point that their leadership was threatening resignation en masse, which is unbelievable, unthinkable, unacceptable. Um, the fact that the people of Ghana have spent all this money to support them, train them, we expect them to go in accordance with their code of conduct. All said and done, I think that we should now sit down, as we have been doing, uh, to listen to them fully, to understand them, to negotiate with them, to try to come to terms with what they want, so that we don't have our doctors you know, on and off strike. It's not a good thing for the country, nor for themselves. So. I, I, I believe that what they have done is good. The decision they have taken to go back is good. Um, many of them were breaking ranks. They were worried about what kind of leadership they were being, um, they were served with, and there was a need for them to reassess themselves. I met somebody who told me that... A medical doctor? Uh, no, I met a specialist who mm. told me that the, the doctors um, didn't, were not very professional in their approach to labor issues and that in order for them to have achieved maximum, the maximum of it all, it was important for them to keep doing their work and spend the money and energy in hiring the uh, best professionals who can do the who can do the negotiations for them with government. And I think that is is right. You know, we should behave I mean we should now rise above the feeling that we are all in all and can do everything on our own. You know, so I think they should they should spread their tentacles wider. They should take advantage of the situation and get as many uh, professionals as possible to consult before they, um, they they approach government, so that they don't lose out when the uh, when the negotiations are up to a certain point. We 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 are with them, except that we are not with them in the actions they were taking. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, now we've come to the point where. They have to go back to the various wards and health facilities. Um, how quickly they need to go back is also an issue because uh, our checks this morning has given us the indication, really, not many of those members have responded to the call, even though, of course, formally they would ultimately would have to go back to the health facilities. Well, uh, I, I think that in matters of this nature, by the time the their national council or whatever they took the decision some of them might be out of their stations the various jurisdictions yes okay. so obviously they need to organize themselves and come back but i have some every hope that by 
the close or by midday, somewhere around it, like we would have seen a lot of them coming uh, to posts. But let me also say this, that I had said that in our own culture, you see, we have our own way of, you know, uh, resolving conflicts using other means apart from the orthodox means of the and i have been proving right that when the uh, national house of chiefs came in sat them down spoke to them and we, were, we somehow got something through so we, we should be using some of these uh albeit i mean for want of a better word on orthodox means of conflict resolution We're trying to reach out you said. right trying to reach out because our elders are the way of doing it and we we have even done it as a nation when we brought this uh, eminent chief to go and resolve. After all, the, the, the things were legal matters, but eventually we realized that we could use uh, these uh, eminent chiefs to go and do And we made some, we, so I would want to appeal that we shouldn't forget uh, some of these things which we have used over the years, you know, to resolve our own uh, uh, conflicts amongst ourselves co culturally, and uh, I think we will get somewhere with them. But again, I'm also mm -hmm. wanting to say that let us not go back and try to uh, see who did what and who didn't. Now that things are settled, let's allow uh, the going forward the, the negotiations to continue, and then uh, the doctors' uh, lives are involved. We should also go to work. Mm. We do understand that as in matters of this nature, especially once they've called for the truce to come to an end, or they, they call for the disagreement to come to an end, and then they will go back to the negotiation table. Many of us would not want to revisit uh, the issues that came up. Uh, but the point is, it's also been appointed to other professional groups as well. Uh, at what point do we need to make sure we need to make cool heads uh, prevail? so that in matters of such disagreement or such uh, disenchantment in many respects, uh, we can know that these are the recourses that we need to take. These are the steps that we need to take to resolve differences. Well, first of all, we need to understand the environment we operate you know, as labor activists. Um, we are operating in an environment which is not like others. We are a country with some limited resources. And so the first thing anybody has to consider is to see whether the country you are working for has amassed enough wealth, energy, resource to be able to respond to the kinds of demands we are making. If we assess all that and we see that they can, then we take the first step. And if we take the first step, it's important to do enough consultation, find out the legal position you are taking, find out the kind of legal minds or experts who can advise you and then discuss with your, your people so that realistically when you are coming out to take an action it will reflect the reality. So we will expect that um, government would have had some experience in dealing with uh, these labor issues all these years that we've had challenges with them. And I know that um, we have had enough experience, you know, because we've gotten enough strike actions. People have taken, um, laid down their tools for a while, and we begin to understand how the shape of it is all about. So the experience should be two ways. One with the government or the state, the other with the, with the activists the labor activists who are asking for something. So a combination of the two should give two kinds of experience, an experience to handle them, an experience to make a request through um, industrial action. I, I believe that the two experiences can be shared. Mm. Unfortunately, in this country, we don't document too much. You know, We leave everything to chance. But it's important that at the end of the doctor's strike, a whole documentary has to be done in print for us to know what happened, how did they plan it, how did it come about, what were the 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 motives behind it, you know, what were the driving forces. Just to serve as a guide. Yeah, to serve future. as a guide. And a reference how did point. government where did government come from? How eventually did we come to the resolution? 
who were the heroes, who were the villains, <laughs> and all that. You know, they are important. All right. Okay, uh, this is what we decided to do this morning. Uh, just send a lot more of our correspondents to the various uh, regional hospitals, but also the better uh, and recommended um, referral hospitals we have in the country. And so we're going to touch base with our correspondent in the Ashanti region, uh, greater, uh, parts of Greater Accra, elsewhere in the Volta region as well. But right now we have our lead correspondent in the Ashanti region, Erastos Asari Donko on the line. And um, I am told that you visited the Konfo Anoche Teaching Hospital. What exactly was the prevailing situation this morning? Yeah, um, uh, we had uh, some patients uh, trooping in uh, coming in to even wait at the specialist OPD, uh, who counts about 50 of them, uh, sitting on benches, waiting for uh, the doctors to come. I asked them, they said they've heard it on radio that the doctors are coming, and so uh, they have also come early uh, to wait for them because uh, some of them have been going home, uh, staying in the house, waiting uh, to, for when this will end uh, so that they can come back for uh, their prescription. Some of them uh, have surgeries. Uh, some of them have ailments that they needed to uh, do uh, some review and they've not done it, so they've been in the house waiting. When you go to the polyclinic area, the situation is not um, different. Uh, you have patients waiting as far back as, uh, as early as 5 a.m. Uh, for the doctor's uh, turn up. Now, at the accident and emergency center, uh, I was there when they brought in uh, this guy who has been shot uh, and then he was shot at the Galaxy side around Bingwao and they brought him in. In fact, he was tried and uh, tried and moved in uh, for doctors to attend to him. I have to see some patients uh, in there as well. So uh, the doctors are back, uh, they are working. Mm. So do I get the understanding then that the doctors have resumed work? And as early as when did they start working? Well, they started working uh, following yesterday uh, when some cases started coming in. And uh, mind you, now people are bringing in uh, cases that have been lingering at the general private hospitals and needed uh, some uh, more expert attention. And so the expectation is that um, loads of, of work is going to come in here, are going to come in here. Uh, this morning for them to look at. So the backlog of cases uh, have been waiting for them and uh, they are going to uh, have a tough time this weekend. This mm. week. And before we let you go though, what really is the public sentiment now that they have announced uh, to resume work? Because of course the public also would either loathe them or in many respects uh, congratulate them or commend them for trying to rescind their decision to still continue the strike action. In fact, uh, you are not getting, uh, you are getting a bit of both. Uh, there are people who um, uh, say, in the tree balance, they'll say, Yabram, uh, so all right. you keep going on strike and all that. Mm. There are people who, uh, you know, have some loathing for them for, you know, extending their predicament this far. But there, there is also some level of, sympathy for them in a way that they think uh, they have a legitimate concern and government must look into their case as well. So you get a bit of uh, both on the table, but the, the uh, major sign is that of happiness that they are back and they are taking care of them. Okay, thank you very much. Erastus Asari Donko is a correspondent in the Ashanti region who has visited uh, many of those um, referral hospitals we have in the Ashanti region and the smaller uh, polyclinics and health facilities and we're trying to get a lot more update from him as well but right now uh, Ivy Setoji is um, at uh, the Volta Regional Capital who visited other uh, public health institutions also in the region and to give us the latest update. Uh, is it the same situation where we have doctors already resuming uh, work uh, as of yesterday Ivy? Yes good morning Roland. It is the same uh, situation here. Uh, doctors have resumed work uh, since yesterday, they are working, um, they are going about this normal duties. Uh, patients are coming uh, as usual. You know, uh, because the impact of the strike was not really, really uh, felt here that much uh, compared to other regions. Uh, talking to some patients, some of them uh, did not really, really feel what was going on. 
uh, but some also are so happy. They told me they, they, they are very happy that the doctors are back at least they can attend to their needs. So uh, okay. doctors are working. Mm. Everything is normal again. Mm. And before I let you go, though, if you say that the strike action was not felt there, does it mean that we had less sick people in the health facilities? We had what? We had less or people reporting, less of them reporting sick as a result not of that. Not really. You know, when, when the strike started, uh, most of the time, what are reading, when there is a strike action, or what businesses, uh, they don't really, really, it's 50-50. Some of them go, some of, some of them uh, observe, some of them don't. Okay, so when it started, you see doctors still working, doing uh, uh, that particular time, doing the strike uh, month. But uh, now, in a way, they also stop for some time. So it was 50-50. So some of the patients told me that, even some of the doctors that they know were not able to go on strike. And so it's normal. They see the doctors every day after now. Okay. okay. And there's only a few of them who went on strike. So uh, they are happy they are back. So as long as this, uh, we have less um, in the hospital. <laughs> Everybody was there, but just that the strike, the death was not really good in the water region. Well, thank you very much, Ivy Satoji, a correspondent at home uh, in the Volta region, has also visited other public health institutions in the region to give us the latest updates. And we'll try as much as possible to get a lot more from our correspondent in the various regions in the course of our discussion before we indeed also wrap uh, the segment up. Uh, but it also means that the commitment is there from the medical doctors. Not everybody really wanted to go on strike, but because it's a, it's a, it's a membership body issue, they also needed to just hit to the call. Is that not it? No, okay, obviously. I mean, they wouldn't have had a hundred percent, you know, uh, everybody support, uh, support uh, as it were. Again, I believe that it is not uh, for fun that a doctor would want to, you know, leave the patient. And this, but some pressure somehow, you know, let them go the way they did. But, you know, like Minister said, that uh, going forward, the experiences that we've gotten from, you see, if we could document them, because it looks like virtually every, I mean, for since a champion time, if I, if I, I had had doctors having problems with uh, you know, different governments. So it's not like uh, the doctors target a particular government that it is this happened. If we were documenting these things and getting the experiences, maybe we were going forward, we might not have the situation in which we are. We, we've seen over the okay. past. We're hoping that the situation improves. I remember the first week when the strike action, you were here, yeah. and uh, you tried to get a lot more aid from the minister responsible thereafter. Uh, but as far as we're concerned, we need to make sure this doesn't happen again. Uh, at what point do we have to say these are essential services, and so we need to make sure their needs are met? While also at the same time arguing that whatever actions they take should be in tune with whatever the regulations are. Because in indeed, uh, if, if they feel the way, all right in their positions. They wouldn't have taken the entrenched positions or, or, or otherwise. Well, as, as long as we run a human institution and run the affairs of humans, it's difficult to say that these things will not occur no matter what you do. People will have needs and they will have wants and eventually they will extend the needs when they meet the first ones. So, so that's the challenge we are going to face going on. Um, but I think that is, it still boils down to the same kinds of experiences. The question you asked, which demanded what um, kind of experiences do we have uh, after all this, it, it, it tells us that we can solve the problems, but we need to have some level of understanding. You know, um, People have to understand the system we are running so that when they want to take an action, it fits into the regulations and the laws. You know, so that we don't, we don't go on such actions, go on to take such actions, and eventually it plays back on the whole society and themselves as well. So, uh, I will have not, I won't have much to say on this except to say that um, if we are talking about preventing it in the future, we would need to take advantage of the experiences we've gone through over the years. So we can we can look back and be able to forecast into the future mm. and see how we can make the future better. Great. Yeah.